Do you think they're opening up now? Because obviously they want to keep viewers. So there's more and more truth getting out there. Is that affecting what they're putting out, do you think? Well, that's a good question because, um, you know, on the whole, they're going to represent the official government line and they're not going to be tolerant of variation. And uh, I think uh, because of the Internet, more Americans are gaining access to more sources of information. The influence of television is gradually dwindling, which I think is all to the good. But then you have miscreants like Joe Lieberman who are trying to clamp down on the internet and offer China, communist China, as a model. He says if the yeah. Chinese communists can, can censor the internet, so should the American government. Yeah. I, I don't know where he grew up, but that no one else would have ever thought to offer such an example for us to follow. Well, that's how extreme it's got. It is, it is, it is. It is. And Lieberman's particularly bad. In my opinion, he's betrayed every principle for which the government stands. Yeah. I think the, the two words conspiracy theory have just become programmed, mind controlled into the population. Yes. Um, but it, I think it is breaking down. Yes. How, how would you see that co compared to England and America? What would you say was the demographic? Well, I've been astonished in planning to come here how much I've learned about the extent to which British uh, media are under control of the government and MI5 and MI6. So that's troubled me quite a lot. I was very glad to find a venue like Friends House, which is so prominent and easily accessible opposite Euston Station to hold this meeting, but I tell you, I went through about a dozen different colleges and universities before I was able to land Friends House, and I only did that on the side. I didn't let those with whom I was collaborating here in London know that I was even dealing with Friends House until I'd locked it in. So the others refused to put the meeting And the others wouldn't allow me to do it, yeah. Well, I think this is, um, we, we're living in pretty much a police state in this country now. I'm sorry to say, in the number, you know, I think London is the most surveyed population Indeed in the world with yeah. the cameras on every corner and so forth. And it's um, people's whole mindset has become used to this. I'm very disenchanted with the situation in the United States and Barack Obama has not lived up to his promises as, as a, a new president. He hasn't rescinded the Patriot Act. He hasn't repealed the Military Commission Act. He hasn't closed Guantanamo. He hasn't got our forces out of Iraq. And now he's sending more to Afghanistan on the basis of the claim that that's the region from which we were attacked? Is the man that simple-minded? Does he know, mo know more about the reality of 9-11? That it was an inside job with help from our Israeli friends? The first thing he did when he came in was bomb Pakistan. Yeah, so that was very, that was, I agree, <laughs> that was very disturbing. No, he, it's taken me a while to become as disillusioned as I am now, yeah. but I no longer have faith in Obama, and I do think he is a stooge for the forces that were dominating the administration of George W. Bush. So what we really have is a third Bush administration, some call it Bush light yeah. or Bush in blackface, but that seems to be the reality. So you, you thought there would be a sea change when Obama came in? You I thought, did. Really? Yeah. yeah. I sent the man $100 five different times, <laughs> and now I think I need a, a refund. Yeah, plus interest. <laughs> plus interest, damn straight. <laughs> so you're helping to bail the banks out, you didn't even realize. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> As far as 9-11 um, goes for America, we had a similar incident here, which is on a much smaller scale, 7-7. Seven, seven. Yes. Now, have you um, done any research into that? I have. Yes. Yes. I've even featured Maude Dibb, who created 7-7 seven, seven Ripple Effect, the DVD yeah. on my radio program twice, yeah. and Nick Kolstrom, who published yeah. uh, Terror on the Tube, both of whom are leading experts on the subject. Yeah. And what I love about 7-7 seven, seven is it's a microcosm of an inside job from beginning to end. Start with Peter Power talking yeah. about training up and on the very same tube stops, same lines where the actual attacks yeah. take place and you got these four Muslim young men who are supposed to come in to serve as the patsies but they can't make their connection. Yeah. So the bombs go off but they aren't there to be yeah. nailed and in fact they apparently turn up being shot to death when they're trying to make their way to uh, the Reuters news service to report what's going on. So I think that the 7-7 the, the seven, seven ripple effect is brilliant and every uh, British citizen and American should watch and study it. Yes, indeed. This false flag terrorism, it's, they seem to follow a very similar route and there's every a, time. And, and there's a history with the Mossad, yeah. you know, yeah. whose motto is make war by deception. For example, I have twice been flown to Buenos Aires to give talks on JFK and 9-11, and I have come to know Adrian Salbucci, who is a leading expert on two attacks, one on the Israeli embassy in 1992, another on the Jewish community center in 1994. I interviewed him on my program and Voltaire.net.org invited us 
to transcribe it for our publication mm -hmm. uh, on, on their international journal, which we have done. You can find that also on my blog site at jamesfetzer.blogspot.com. But we also mentioned there in a note about an attack on the Congress of Mexico shortly after 9-11, where the Israeli agents carrying weapons were actually apprehended, and then the Israeli embassy went into high gear to get them extradited after Israel and to try to cover it all up. And there's a huge history here. In a book I recently discovered, from which I actually read uh, several chapters on the air, Stranger Than Fiction, which was published in, in 2003, gives a, a really excellent analysis of the history of Zionism and the creation of the Israeli uh, state and the many terrorist attacks involving, for example, the, the bombing of the King David Hotel uh, dressed as Arabs. The, these terrorists were seeking to promote uh, the creation of, of Israel. It, it's really unbelievable. And you have to study it to understand the, the influence of Zionism, this belief that's virtually mythical in Jewish superiority com combined with a belief in the entitlement to the Palestinian lands for which there's only the most dubious historical evidence or justification. With the modern day Israel, which is an aggressor state, has created the biggest concentration camp in the world in Gaza and even seeks to kill those who would come to bring them relief in the form of medical supplies, construction materials and so forth as occurred with the Freedom Flotilla where Ken O'Keefe, our master of ceremonies, became an internationally recognized hero for resisting them, actually disarming two or three of the commandos. Three years ago, the word Zionism wasn't even in my vocabulary. Uh, and I realized I need to come to grips with it, so I began featuring experts on Zionism, Barry Chamish, Stephen Lenman, and then Elias Davidson, who was a, a Palestinian who has extensive experience here. And I began to refine my understanding. And because we were often being attacked for being anti-Semitic for 9-11 research that indicated Israeli complicity, I wound up publishing an article, Is 9-11 Research Anti-Semitic, which you can find on a Google search to read well, about it. Yeah, anti-Semitic means anti-Arab. Uh, well, well, right. I mean, when you understand the meaning of se so what it is to be a Semite, which is a linguistic yeah. distinction, all the Palestinians are Semites. It's just a propaganda game. You know, they're very, very clever. Like accusing 9-11 researchers of being Holocaust deniers, no, no comparison could be less appropriate. Consider the Holocaust deniers denied that their government, the German government, was involved in the murder of perhaps as many as six million Jews, whereas 9-11 truthers aff affirm that their government, the American government, with a little help from the Mossad, was responsible for the death of 3,000. How could they be more opposite? Well, Michael Chertoff actually said on a debate that um, if you were anti-Zionist, you were anti-Jewish, and it was an EU law. And it's absurd. That's absurd as the laws against denying the Holocaust. It, why should anyone who believes in the reality of the Holocaust not want there to be research? If the research is done responsibly, it's going to conclude there was a Holocaust. And if it concludes there wasn't, then we surely need to know that if that's the case, too. So there should be no such laws well, against thinking thoughts that are improper in the is, eyes of yeah, the government. This it's, is the soundbite world, though, isn't it? You know, it's Holocaust denier, conspiracy theorist. It's, it's a way of just programming people. Yes. And, and what's really sad about it is when you start mentioning stuff that yes. is, you know, to do with these events, yes. you, they start rolling their eyes in a very yes. arrogant, knowing way, as, yes. as, though, as though you're a lunatic. And yet conspiracies only require two or more individuals acting together to bring about an illegal end, which means conspiracies are as common as an American as apple pie. And when you, you take the word theory, you use it in the weak sense as a speculation, a rumor, or a guess, then you get conspiracy, rumor, speculation, or guess. But if you use it in the strong sense of Einstein's theory of relativity, Newton's theory of gravitation, you realize theory also stands for empirically testable explanatory principles. And when you combine that, which is what we've been doing in scholars, taking from the weak sense of conspiracy theory to the strong sense, of, of theorizing, Fact. yes, about conspiracies in yeah. ways that is empirically testable and you transform our, your understanding, which is what I've done both in relation to JFK and 9-11. You go to PatriotsQuestion911.com, you're going to find 2,000 experts across many fields. You get former government officials, military experts, engineers and architects, as you mentioned, 
pilots and aeronautical engineers, structural engineers, mechanical engineers. You find their photographs, their bio statement, and their remarks, their views about 9-11. It's mm -hmm. overwhelming and, and speaks to the depth as well as breadth of interest in this issue. I think around 45% or more of the American people now no longer believe what they've been told about 9-11. I think that's probably slightly higher than here. Probably slightly higher. In relation to JFK, it's up around 85 to 90 percent yeah. who, no, who no longer believe what the government's had to say. So what do you see the future of um, Scholars for 9-11 Truth? Do you think more and more people will come on board? More credibility? Well, I, I would certainly like to think that. I believe in the proliferation of competing research entities, however. The history of science is replete with how the science has advanced when you had competition among different groups. So I, I'm just as happy that there's now a multiplicity rather than a single entity, though we did a great deal to shatter this this uh, overriding lack of willingness to talk publicly about 9-11. I think scholars had an historic place here. In fact, when I began the organization, the, 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 the line for articles in the mainstream press was virtually flat. And once scholars was founded, it started to climb, climb, and it hasn't, hasn't reduced since. So do you think that um, Obama's going to close down the internet at any point? Well, I certainly hope not, but the idea that he should even want to have the authority to do that is just, to me, dumbfounding. I cannot think any single action the government could take that would create a greater uproar among the citizens of the United States than shutting down the Internet. There would be genuine outrage. Everyone would be affected. It's unbelievable. And some of the people like Lieberman and this Jay Rockefeller from West Virginia seem to be mental midgets. They know nothing about the Internet. You know, they seem to think it's just a place where people post opinions. You know, they don't understand its role for research and communication and, and spreading uh, you know, news, news and articles and all that. I mean, they just have the meagerest grasp. The, the mainstream media in, in, in this country, I think, has, has become so dumbed down now. Um, the BBC especially. Well, you know, the newspapers in the United States have, have got rid of their investigative journalists yeah. on the grounds that, the, you know, you couldn't count on them producing anything. They're expensive. They, yeah. they take a lot of time. But that's ridiculous. These are the people who keep the government honest. These are the ones who expose corruption in government. Take a Woodward and Bernstein, all the president's men, you know, exposing Watergate. If it hadn't been for them, Nixon might have got away with it. I mean, it's, it's just unthinkable that the fourth estate should abdicate its responsibility. The fa founding fathers were well aware of the importance of having an independent press. Uh, even Thomas Jefferson, as I recall, observed that if he had to choose between a, a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, he would choose the latter. And, and now what we get is just PR. I think that's pretty much true, yeah. The one-sided view that the government wants you to have shaped by its intelligence agency, so they've begun a massive propaganda operation. In fact, Frank Wisner, who was a genius at propaganda for the CIA, you, you had this description of an organ with, you know, CBS, ABC, NBC, New York Times, Washington Post, Chicago Tribune, and he called it the Mighty Wurlitzer. So he would sit there and play the tune and all the newspapers and television would broadcast the same message. It comes to the point where newspapers in this country can't make any money. So the quality of the journalism is obviously on the floor now. I do think this is where the internet is making a difference and more people are realizing they have more reliable sources of information through the internet. Yeah. They compare alternative sources. Yes. They can do research here. Yeah. I mean, this internet is a fantastic tool for research. So as yeah. many people don't even bother yeah. with the yeah. evening news anymore because they can get what they need to know more reliably through the internet. I've actually discovered you can learn more about what's going on in the world through, through Pravda or Russia yeah. today yeah. than you can from the New York Times or the Washington Post. Well, that's absurd. But conversely, the, the uninformed people these days seem to be more in, uninformed than they ever were. Studies have shown that those Americans who get most of their news from Fox News are the least informed about what's really going on in the world. Those who go to PBS and the Internet are the best informed. So it's really quite a striking yeah. spectrum of knowledge and opinion. Yes. So are you going to come back to England soon? I look forward to it. I, I love this. is about my seventh visit to London, and I enjoy it. It's my favorite city. You seem to be thriving on it. I'm having a great time. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. My pleasure. Thanks to you. Yes.